May 4, 2007, Wizards of the Coast released the 42nd expansion of the Magic the Gathering franchise known as Future Sight. This set would complete the Time Spiral block, the third set in the series, following Planar Chaos. Future Sight contained 180 cards overall, with 60 cards at each rarity. It continued the theme of time started in the first set of the block, and had new cards dubbed Future Shifted which had unique aspects like previously used abilities defined under new keywords that would be carried forward in later sets. Additionally, the set included alternative card designs that had become iconic among Magic cards. Future Sight cards were also printed with the expansion symbol that resembled an eye. Future Sight was sold in 15 card booster packs, fat packs, and also had a novel released by Scott McGow of the same name along with four pre-constructed decks that included the blue-red Fate Blaster, the red-green Future Shock, the white-black Rebels Unite, and the blue-black Suspended Sentence. In terms of mechanics, things like Convoke, Bloodthirst, Scry, Transmute, Cycling, among others, were brought into Future Sight from previous sets. Mechanics such as Lifelink, Death Touch, Shroud, and Poisonous which had been around the game for quite some time, were also included but now under officially keyworded abilities. Tribal was a mechanic that was introduced here and used in a few other sets, but fell out of favor with R&D later on after the set Rise of the Eldrazi. There were also numerous mechanics that were only seen a couple of times throughout the set, or mechanics that were only seen on one or two cards. These mechanics were Absorb, seen on one card, Lymph Sliver, Fate Seal, seen on the cards Mesmeric Sliver and Spin into Myth. Frenzy, seen on the one card Frenzy Sliver. Gravestorm, seen on Bitter Ordeal. Aura Swap, which appeared on the card Arcanum Wings. And Type Cycling, that appeared on Vidalcan Aether Mage and Homing Sliver. The story of Future Sight continues on from the previous novel and set Planar Chaos. More temporal rifts have opened up since we last saw our heroes. While some time rifts have been contained and sealed, a temporal rift over the island of Tolaria has become unsealable in the present timeline. The only person to help seal the rift is the character Karn, who goes back in time to stop the wizard Baron from using a power spell that obliterates himself and the Phyrexians during the invasion timeline. However, while the Tolaria time rift did get sealed, Karn becomes lost and the character Jessica returns to Dominaria. On top of that, the ancient evil planeswalker, Leshrik, also returns to Dominaria as well. When it came to the cycles of the set, there were 12 true cycles and one vertical cycle. The vertical cycle was called Morph, which not only consisted of different rarity cards, but also an enchantment, an artifact, and a land card. The vertical cycle of cards was Lumithread Field, Zoetic Cavern, and Wet Wheel. The true cycles consisted of categories such as Future Shifted Dual Lands, the Textless Vanilla Creatures, Common Cyclers, Spell Shapers, Augurs, Scrying Spells, along with Future Shifted Slivers. One true cycle of cards was the Monocolored Ability Lands, which were lands that come in tapped, can get mana of their respective color, along with having an ability printed on them. This cycle of cards included New Benalia, which had the Scry ability, Teleria West, which had Transmute, Dakmore Salvage, which had Dredge, Keldon Megaliths, which had Hellbent, and Lanawar Reborn, which had the Graft ability. The next cycle of cards were called Packs, which were rare instant spells, each with a mana cost of zero, but with a cost that is to be paid during the caster's next upkeep, lest that player lose the game. This particular cycle, according to designer Mark Rosewater, was inspired by the unhinged card Rocket Powered Turbo Slug. This cycle of cards included the white card Intervention Pact, the blue colored Pact of Negation, the black colored Slaughter Pact, the red colored Pact of the Titan, and the green colored Summoner's Pact. Next were the Magi, which were a cycle of cards that consisted of wizards that had the same ability as an enchantment from a previous magic set. This cycle consisted of Magus of the Moat, which had the same ability as Moat from the Legends set. Magus of the Future, which had the same ability as Future Sight from the Onslaught set. Magus of the Abyss, which played the same as the card Abyss, which also came from Legends. Magus of the Moon, which played the same as Blood Moon from the set The Dark. And Magus of the Vineyard, which played the same as Eladomri's Vineyard from the set Tempest. After that were the recurring Suspend spells, which were uncommon Suspend 3 cards that can be used multiple times throughout the game. 
This cycle of cards included the white card, Chronomantic Escape, the blue card, Reality Strobe, and the black card, Festering March, the red card, Arc Blade, with the last card being the green-colored, Cyclical Evolution. The last cycle of cards were the Grandeur Legends, which were a group of legendary creatures that depicted a descendant of previous magic legendary creatures. This cycle of creatures included Oris Samite Guardian, which was a descendant of the legendary creature cards Orem and Chomano from the sets Tempest and Mercadian Mass, respectively. Lanessa Zephyr Mage, who was a descendant of Alexi Zephyr Mage from the set Prophecy. Corlast, heir to Blackblade, who was a descendant of Dakon Blackblade from the set Legends. Tarox Bladewing, which was a descendant of Rorix Bladewing from Onslaught. And Baru Fist of Krosa who was a descendant of Kamal, Fist of Krosa, which was also from the Onslaught set. On top of that, this set had a couple of functional reprints, which included Fomori Nomad, that was based off of the card Obsidian Giant from Portal Second Age, along with the card Bearing Glory, which was mostly based off of the card The Cheese Stands Alone from the parody set Unglued. There were many notable cards from Future Sight that affected several different formats. The first notable card was called Horizon Canopy, which was a land that can give you one green or white mana for one life, with the ability to draw you a card after sacrificing it. It saw its early success when it was first printed, where it was part of two block format aggro decks, as well as being part of the deck called Duran Rock that won at Worlds 2007 for the standard format. It has also had an impact in multiple formats such as Modern, Legacy, and Extended, where it was seen in decks such as Urzatron, Death and Taxes, Mavericks, and Elves. On top of that, Horizon Canopy had recent success in the Modern format, where it was part of the Humans deck run by Eli Loverman that won Pro Tour London back in April of 2019. The next card on the Notables list was Pact of Negation. This was a blue counter spell that had no immediate mana cost, but had to have a converted mana cost of 5 paid on the next turn or the player casting it would lose the game. When it showed up in the standard format, it was part of the second place Monk Guile deck that was run by Emil Tannenbaum in GP Krakow 2007, along with being part of multiple top 8 decks in a few 2008 professional scenes. Pact of Negation has also been part of many top performing decks in the various formats, which included Louis Scott Vargas' Storm deck for the extended format that received first place at GP Los Angeles 2009, Alex Hatfield's High Tide deck that won the Star City Games Legacy Open back in 2011, along with being part of other high power decks such as Quicken Toast and Revelart. More recently, Pact of Negation was part of the Amulet Titan deck that was run by Michael Thompson, where it obtained second place at GP Harford in April 2018. Summoner's Pact was a green instant card similar to Pact of Negation, with the effect of searching for a green creature and putting it into your hand. However, if the player that casted Summoner's Pact didn't pay the 4 converted mana cost at the beginning of the next turn, that player would lose the game. When this card was first printed, it was not in any top performing decks in Standard or Limited, but when it came to the extended format, it was part of 9 top 8 decks overall, with 3 of those decks winning 2 Grand Prix and 1 Pro Tour from 2008 to 2010. Summoner's Pack was part of a small amount of different deck styles that included Hive Mine, Elves, Bloom Titan, Scape Shift, along with Infect. The most recent top performing deck that this card was part of was the Valakit deck that was run by Theme when, where it earned a top 8 placing at Pro Tour London in April 2019. Street Wraith was a 3-4 black creature card for 3 generic and 2 black mana, with the cycling effect that required 2 life. From 2007 to 2010, this card made very little impact on the professional scene in the formats of Standard, Limited, Block, or Extended. It was not until 2011 that this card started making more of an impact and having success in numerous decks. In 2011, for the Legacy format, Street Wraith was part of the deck called Manalist Dredge, run by Nicholas Rausch, that will go on to win SCG Legacy Cincinnati. Alongside that, and two months after that event, Street Wraith would also be part of the Dredge deck, run by Michael Morrissey, that would go on to win SCG Legacy Atlanta on September 2011. Street Wraith would go on to impact the modern format the most by being part of the deck styles of Living End and numerous Shadow decks. Most recently, Street Wraith was part of the deck Hollow One, which was used by Ben Hall that went on to win the Modern Pro Tour 25th event on August 2018. There was the card, Venser Shaper Savant, which was a legendary wizard creature that cost 2 generic and 2 blue mana, had 2 power, 2 toughness, had the flash mechanic, along with the effect of bouncing back a target spell or permanent to the owner's hand. 
For the first three years of this card's presence, it made a very big impact in both standard and extended formats. During the time of 2007 to 2009, Venser Shaper Savant was part of 16 top 8 standard decks in 5 professional scenes, along with being part of 13 top 8 decks in the extended format between 7 professional events. This card was included in decks such as Revelark, Mannequin, Merfolk, Sonic Boom, NLU, and even Blue Green Tron. However, it has not seen any top 8 inclusions in both the modern format and the vintage format. The most recent top 8 deck Venser was part of was the White Blue Miracles between 2014 and 2016 for the Legacy format, where the card was part of 7 top 8 decks which included 2 second place finishes and winning Grand Prix Kyoto in 2015. However, since then Venser has not seen any significant play with the exception of some Commander decks. Slaughter Pact was a black instant card that had no mana cost with the effect of destroying a target non-black creature. However, just like the other pack cards, if the player did not pay the extra mana cost on their next turn, that player would lose the game. When it first appeared for the standard and extended formats, Slaughter Pack was used a decent amount in decks and would end up being part of 19 different top 8 decks between the two formats. Slaughter Pack would also see a good amount of inclusion in top 8 decks for the Legacy format, where it would be part of 15 total top 8 decks. However, it was the modern format where this card would see the most success. In the modern format, the Slaughter Pack would end up being part of 33 top 8 decks with the most recent top performing inclusion being Ad Nauseam for the Unified Modern Event in 2016's World Magic Cup. Other top decks Slaughter Pack has been a part of Teps, Duran, Rock, Elves, Hive Mine, along with Birthing Pod. Grove of the Burn Willows was a non-basic land that allowed you to tap for one generic mana or a red or green mana at the cost of giving your opponent one life. When it was first printed, it was not used a whole lot in Standard or Extended. Between its first printing, it only saw 8 top 8 inclusions in the two formats. However, Grove of the Burn Willows would see a huge spike in play when it came to Modern, where it would be part of over 40 top 8 decks in that format alone. One play that was vital to this card's use was with Punishing Fire from the Zendikar set that allowed you to repeatedly use and reuse the card. Grove of the Burn Willows would also see some play in Legacy, where it was mostly seen in Lands and Punishing Maverick, and was also included in two top 8 vintage decks. Bridge from Below was a black enchantment card that needed 3 black mana to be cast. However, for the card to be effective, it had to be in your graveyard. Bridge from Below's first effect required the card to be in the graveyard in order to create 2-2 zombies from creatures that were destroyed on your side of the field. If a creature on your opponent's side of the field was sent to the graveyard, Bridge from Below would have to be exiled. This card was mainly used with Dredge and mechanics from the Odyssey block, with the card mostly being seen in blue-black combo strategies. While it would not be part of any top 8 standard decks, and was part of very few top 8 extended and modern strategies early in its career, it would be part of a large amount of top 8 decks in the Eternal formats, where it was included in a total of 17 top 8 legacy decks and 14 top 8 vintage decks. Sword of the Meek was a 2 mana artifact card that gave an equipped creature plus 1 plus 2 and could be equipped from the graveyard to a 1-1 creature that comes into play on your side. While it did not make a significant impact in Standard or early in its career, it was banned in both Extended and Modern when players started using the Alara Reborn card, Thopter Foundry, to get a massive amount of Thopter creatures. Sword of the Meek would be unbanned in early 2016, but has since not made a huge impact on any of the formats. Between Standard, Modern, Extended, and the Eternal formats, Sword of the Meek only appeared in a 13 total top 8 decks. Dryad Arbor is a 1-1 land creature card. It can produce 1 green mana, but is affected by summoning sickness. Just like some of the other cards on this list, it did not make big waves in the Standard or Extended formats. However, Dryad Arbor would see more inclusion in the modern format, and even more so when it came to Legacy. This card sees a vast amount of play with another card, Green Sun Zenith, as a way to get mana ramp engines going by turn 1. In its modern career so far, Dryad Arbor was part of 24 top 8 decks overall that included 5 first place finishes in decks such as Infect, Living End, Aura Hexproof, Jund, and Bogles. In Legacy, it was part of 71 top 8 decks that included a total of 7 winning decks. The last notable card from the Future Sight set was Tarmogoyf. This was a creature for 1 generic and 1 green mana that has a power and toughness plus 1 equal to the number of card types in all graveyards. 
This is the most well-known creature card not just of the future sight set, but in the entire Time Spiral block. When it hit the standard and extended scenes at the beginning of its release, Tarmogoyf was part of 57 top 8 inclusions in multiple events, which also included 8 wins between these two formats. While it made some waves later on in Vintage for its cheap mana cost, it made a significantly higher impact in both Modern and Legacy. In Modern, it was included in 117 decks total, with 8 of those inclusions being winning decks. While in the Legacy format, Tarmogoyf was able to be part of 181 top 8 strategies, in which 25 of those decks went on to win a professional event. Tarmogoyf has been seen throughout its many years of play in decks such as Bug, Canadian Threshold, Zoo, Thresh, Bant, Team America, Jund, Abzan, and even in Death Shadow, among others. In all, Tarmogoyf, between the formats of Standard, Extended, Modern, Legacy, and Vintage, has been in 366 top 8 deck strategies, with 42 of those decks earning first place in a professional setting. A sealed booster box of Future Sight currently goes for around $1,000. This has been a production of the Car Bazaar, with guest reader JJ Freeze, MTG strategist, the director of the MTG Content Creators Awards, an award show that highlights Magic the Gathering content creators big and small. You can find me on Twitter at MTG underscore strategist for the latest updates on the awards, or on Chuckwagon MTG for deck techs and pack openings. If you missed the last episode of Card Anthology, Planar Chaos, narrated by our special guest, Tropixium, please check out that video after this one. Thank you so much for the continued support, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Card Anthology, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Card Bazaar channel for more Magic the Gathering videos. You can find a link to our social media in the description. Be sure to check out the channel's Patreon page and become a patron today to support us at a higher level. One of the big projects that we are doing with Patreon is recording the unofficial audiobooks for the old novels of Magic the Gathering. So far, the channel has the entire Thran and Brothers War unofficial audiobook ready for your listening pleasure. And if you become a patron today, you will be supporting the MTG Novels Project, which will help this channel produce more of the old stories and put them in audiobook form. We would like to thank the newest patrons, Delver's Lab, Florian Krauss, Fabian Klingbeil, Alexander Gatch, and Game Inc. out of Edinburgh, Texas. Thank you so much for listening.